Hi friends, I'm Max Licato. Did you know that the Bible makes more than 100 references to the Holy Spirit? Jesus says more about this counselor than he does about the church, marriage, finances, and the future. In my new book, Help Is Here, we'll take a deep dive into who the Holy Spirit is and how to access the joy, power, peace, and purpose he offers. Be encouraged. Help is here. Available now at maxlucato.com. Hi, everybody. Max Lucato here from my home to yours. Thanks so much for joining me for today's encouraging word. Hello, my friend. God's richest blessings on you. We're continuing our conversation about the Holy Spirit based on a new book I wrote called Help Is Here and taken from messages that I recently shared with our church. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most common questions. How can I know God's will? I have asked that question and I have been asked that question. Well, I think there are two main ways that God communicates with us and we're gonna talk about them today. The primary tool of the Holy Spirit is the verse, the Bible, the Bible. The Apostle Paul told us, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is what, church? The Word of God, the Word of God. The reason that the devil doesn't want you to open the Word of God is because this is the primary communication tool through which the Holy Spirit speaks to us. He communicates to us through Scripture. God's will is found in God's Word. Do you desire to know God's will for your life? Then open God's Word. The psalmist said it this way, Your Word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. So let God's Word be your ultimate authority. Make it your go-to book for questions. Let it be the ultimate mandate on your life. I feel a special burden to say this to young people because you have a thousand and one people in the world telling you that they know what's best for you. Well, they don't. They don't. And just because they have a swagger or just because they have a presence on the internet, that doesn't mean they know the meaning of life. You have to decide who is going to have ultimate authority over my life. Those sheep going over the cliff or God who knows me and loves me. Those sheep will say to you that your value depends upon how pretty you are, how much money's in your pocket. The scripture will tell you, you matter because God made you and God knows you and God loves you. The crowd says, oh, just do what you want, want to do. It won't hurt. But scripture says, no, there is a way that seems right unto a person, but that way can lead to death. People will say, oh, there's no God. If there is a God, he doesn't care about us. But the scripture says, oh, no. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He speaks to us first through the verse. And have you not discovered how practically the Bible speaks to us? Yes, the Bible speaks to us on the big ideas of salvation, our destiny, our identity. Yes, it speaks to us about these major things. But how many of you can bear testimony to the fact that God's word has guided you just through some of the relatively small decisions of life? How to manage money, how to have a friendship, or what career path to take. 
I recall a particular instance in which I was so convinced, I became so convinced that the Bible has advice for even the smallest details of life. My family and I were living in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. We had recently moved to South America. And we had discovered that since our income came from the United States, we were not legally required to pay Brazilian income tax or income tax to the Brazilian government. Well, we as missionaries kind of wrestled with that thought. Well, maybe we're not required to, but here we are using the roads and using the systems. Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we do something? We actually contacted a lawyer and had him come and weigh in on it. And he said, no, legally, you're not required to, but ethically, it's up to you. And so we each said, well, we'll each make our own decision. And I recall thinking, I wonder if the Bible has anything to say about this very unique question that I'm trying to for which I'm trying to find an answer. So I pulled a concordance off my shelf. A concordance is one of those books, you know, that has a list of all the key words in the Bible and takes you to passages that discuss that. I looked under tax or taxes. I found, well, the Bible has quite a bit to say about taxes. And I came across this story that I think is one of the most amazing stories in the Bible. Now, if you've already heard it, don't tell anybody because I'm going to give you the punchline. Peter and the other apostles were talking with Jesus about whether it's right for them as Jews to pay taxes to the Roman government. And you know what Jesus said to them? Look at this. He told them they didn't have to, but we don't want to upset these tax collectors. So go to the lake and fish. After you catch the first fish, open its mouth, and you will find a coin. Take that coin and give it to the tax collectors for you and me. Even Jesus paid taxes when he didn't have to. I got an answer to my question. I think I should pay taxes. So I went fishing. (laughs) Not really. I already had the coin. I didn't have to go find the fish. But I got an answer. I share you that simple story just to say God has an answer for the questions you're wrestling with today. I double dog dare you to say, Lord, I'm confused about this. It's kind of a small thing to others, but it's a big deal to me. Does your word have anything to say about this? And see what happens. You see, the first place to go is the verse. Then, oftentimes, God will affirm what you find in the verse with what? A voice. A voice. This could be the voice of someone you admire. Could be the voice of wise counsel. Could be the voice of a friend. Could be the voice of a mentor. It could be the voice of a person you hear preaching on television. Could be the voice you hear today. Could even be the voice of nature. God speaks through the stars, through the skies, as a form of affirming what's written here. Again, this is where we go first. God will never, never disagree with himself. He will speak it first through the verse. If he affirms it with a voice, it will affirm what he has already said through the verse. Does that make sense? Great examples of this are found in the book of Acts. One of my favorite has to do with the leaders in the church in Antioch, and they were trying to decide whether or not they should send out a couple of missionaries. Here's what happened. They were all worshiping the Lord and fasting for a certain time, and during this time the Holy Spirit said to them, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul to do a special work for which I have chosen them. So after they fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on Barnabas and Saul and sent them out. Did you see that? The Holy Spirit spoke to them. Now, how did he speak to them? Did they hear an audible voice? I don't know. Did one of them speak on behalf of the Holy Spirit to the others? I don't know. Did God take the clouds and organize the clouds in the form of letters that said Barnabas and Saul? I don't know. Quit asking me. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. But I do know the Holy Spirit spoke to them. 
The Holy Spirit led them. The Holy Spirit gave them the voice. And this is what God does for us. What I do know is that as we continue in our relationship with the Holy Spirit, we learn to recognize his voice. Here's the promise. The sheep recognize his voice. We, we, we learn to recognize the voice of the good shepherd. And God will speak to you in ways that you'll begin to recognize. One of those is the voice of your inner convictions. Because you will take God's scripture and it will intermingle with this new character that God is creating. And you'll begin to sense this voice, a knowing, can we call it that, a nudge? Just a sense of, wait, this isn't right. I shouldn't be doing this. Or, that's the better path. I know most people are going that way, but I think I'm going to go this way. There's a sense of, just, this is right. Am I making sense? Can somebody nod if you know that inner voice? It, it's, it's there. It's kind of hard to put into words, but it's that inner voice. that sense. And if, you, and if you don't sense that inner voice, that's okay. Go to somebody and seek counsel. Get direction. But until you have affirmation from the verse, don't move. Well, once you have affirmation from the verse and you want to make sure, then seek out a voice. Say, Lord, am I hearing this correctly? Maybe that's when you go get counsel. That's when you seek advice or that's when you pray even more. Maybe you listen for that inner voice. But God, God loves you too much to leave you wandering in the wilderness on your own. I wonder if you'd let me close our time with a brief word of prayer. Thank you, Father, that you guide us and help us to be sensitive to your spirit today. We grant that we can hear your voice, that inner voice, that voice from others. Whatever voice you choose to use, may we hear your voice. May we trust your verse, the beautiful scripture. May we rely upon the Holy Writ. And we thank you. Thank you so much that we're not left to wander through life on our own. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, okay? Hey, this is Dina Lynn Lakato. Max and I are so thankful you joined us for today's encouraging word. Please subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a single message. For more information about Max's ministry, please visit maxlocato.com. Until next time, stay encouraged. Hello, friends. Susan here with Team Locato. We're excited to announce a fresh take on Max's best-selling 365-day devotional, Grace for the Moment, Note-Taking Edition. Each page of this beautiful leather-soft edition has plenty of room to pen your own prayers and insights. You can order your copy of Grace for the Moment, Note-Taking Edition now at maxlocato.com. Hi friends, I'm Max Lucado. Did you know that the Bible makes more than 100 references to the Holy Spirit? Jesus says more about this counselor than he does about the church, marriage, finances, and the future. In my new book, Help Is Here, we'll take a deep dive into who the Holy Spirit is and how to access the joy, power, peace, and purpose he offers. Be encouraged. Help is here. Available now at MaxLucato.com. Hi, everybody. Max Lucato here from my home to yours. Thanks so much for joining me for today's encouraging word.
Did you know that the Bible makes more than 100 references to the Holy Spirit? Jesus says more about this counselor than he does about the church, marriage, finances, and the future. Clearly an important topic. But how do we practically experience the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives? In my new book, Help Is Here, we will take a deep dive into who the Holy Spirit is and how to access the fresh strength, purpose, and power He offers. I sat down with Susan Ligon from Team Locato to talk about the Holy Spirit and hopefully answer some of the questions you might have. I hope you enjoy the conversation and be encouraged. Help is here. Max, Kim P. is asking, when is it most appropriate to reach out to the Holy Spirit in prayer? Well, there's never a time in which it would be inappropriate because the Spirit is all about prayer. In fact, the Spirit Himself intercedes for us, the Scripture says. He's our intercessor. To intercede for somebody is to simply stand in between. When a strong person takes up the cause of a weak one, intercept, intercession happens. Now, I think this is wonderful. Help us here because the greatest force in the whole universe is interceding for you. He's your spokesperson, your advocate. He keeps us present before God. And that's why we can be so sure that things work out in the right way because we know the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. And what you pray in the night, even if it's just a groan in your heart, is heard in the light of your Father's throne. There's a promise in the Old Testament uh, where the psalmist says, you keep track of all my sorrows. You've collected all my tears in your bottle. You've recorded each one in your book. So let this assurance add value to your prayer. The Apostle Paul did. I think if he were asked, how is a person to walk in the Spirit? He would simply say, pray, pray. Mm -hmm. His life was at least seems to have been devoted to prayer. He prayed regularly, continuously, and he urges us to do the same. He says, on all occasions, pray in the Spirit. So let the day's primary task be simply to stay in touch with the Spirit through the tool of prayer. Spirit. Hmm. Such great advice, Max. We need that right now. Um, you touched on this next question earlier. Let's unpack it a bit more. Vicki M. asked, what does it mean that the Holy Spirit is given to us as a guarantee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Apostle Paul says for us not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. By whom you were sealed. Now, we are sealed we have been sealed. We don't live with the hope of being sealed or with the possibility of being sealed, but we have been sealed once and for all time by the Spirit for redemption. Now, you know what it means to seal something. You know, if, you, if you twist a jar to seal the pickles or if you lick an envelope to seal the letter or you notarize the contract to seal the deal, sealing guarantees ownership. It secures the contents. Sealing is that act that says, this is mine and this is protected. Please understand, when you accepted Christ, God sealed you. He cocooned you. Mm -hmm. He assured your safekeeping. Satan might and will woo you, discourage you, even for a time influence you, but he cannot have you. Christ has identified you as his own, Scripture says, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. I think that's such a wonderful, relieving cause for celebration. And that is when it comes to the divine imprimatur, you have been sealed just as Christ was sealed. Uh, Jesus said, God the Father has set his seal on me. So you and Jesus enjoy the same sealing. The Greek word used to describe the seal of Jesus and the seal of the saint is identical. Would Jesus fear rejection from his father? Of course not. Should you fear the same? 
Of course not. Boy, that gives such peace and assurance, Max. Thank you for that. Um, Sheila H. asks, how can we identify when the Holy Spirit is speaking and moving in our life? If a ranch has a river or creek running through it or drillable water within it, it will be advertised as a ranch with live water. It's blessed by the constant flow of H2O. And the livestock have water to drink. Farmers have water for irrigation. In other words, the presence of water changes dry ranch land into useful property. Now, the presence of spirit-filled Christ followers does the same to society. We refresh. We soothe. We soften. We don't have to force it. We receive Christ. The Holy Spirit flows out of us into the dry places of the world. This is how revival happens. We drink and consequently we leak. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We leak life. Just recently, my wife and I were uh, at a grocery store and uh, she noticed a mother being pushed in a wheelchair by her teenage children. The mother was frail. She was pale. An oxygen tube was wrapped beneath her nose. And Deanlin, all of a sudden, walked in her direction. (laughs) I was pushing the cart, and I looked up, and I had no wife. Uh, Deanlin had felt prompted to help her, but how could she help? And Deanlin later told me, she said, well, the Spirit told me to pay for their groceries. Now, how did the Spirit tell Deanlin that? I think we'll talk about that here in a moment. How do we hear from the Spirit? Uh, she just heard. She just knew she was supposed to pay for the lady's groceries. And of course, the shopper was surprised. The family was grateful. Dylan gave the payment. The family said thank you. She was thrilled to be a tool of the Holy Spirit. She described the moment as the highlight of her day. I thought waking up next to me would have been the <laughs> highlight of the day. But, but she received Christ and the Spirit flowed out of her. It was unforced. It was really unplanned. It was genuine. It was not an obligation. It was not a burden. It just flowed out of her as naturally as water would flow out of a fountain. Now, take that small event and multiply it by 2.3 billion, the number of Christians in the world. You know, suppose each of us, each day, just responded to the prompting of the Spirit to bless someone else with acts of kindness, words of encouragement, I think the world will be a better place. No doubt. Hey, this is Dina Lynn Lakato. Max and I are so thankful you joined us for today's encouraging word. Please subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a single message. For more information about Max's ministry, please visit maxlocato.com. Until next time, stay encouraged. Hello, friends. Susan here with Team Locato. We're excited to announce a fresh take on Max's best-selling 365-day devotional, Grace for the Moment, Note-Taking Edition. Each page of this beautiful leather soft edition has plenty of room to pen your own prayers and insights. You can order your copy of Grace for the Moment Note Taking Edition now at maxlocato.com. Hi, friends, I'm Max Locato. Did you know that the Bible makes more than 100 references to the Holy Spirit? Jesus says more about this counselor than he does about the church, marriage, finances, and the future. In my new book, Help Is Here, we'll take a deep dive into who the Holy Spirit is and how to access the joy, power, peace, and purpose he offers. Be encouraged. Help is here. Available now at maxlucato.com. Hi, 
Hi, everybody. Max Licato here from my home to yours. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Encouraging Word. Hi, friends. Erica here with Team Lucato, continuing our series on the Holy Spirit based on Max's new book, Help is Here. Today, we're sharing part two of Max's conversation with Lisa Harper, a best-selling author and Bible teacher. I've got a couple of questions and I want to, if you're okay, can I interview you for just a second? I'm you like, do whatever I, you I want. only get a you're, little time with my boss. Max and I'm you're so the excited. Boss. Well, well, they're they're totally different ends of the spectrum. One is real personal, and and one is specifically about the book. Y'all, if you do not have this book yet, help is here. Um, Dean and Max, uh, sorry, I'm throwing flattery at you, but you know I have you and Dean Lynn's faces tattooed on my calves. I love the Lucado so much. I have. You know, I have all my seminary books. I had to turn this end of of a room in my house into a big library, and I have just everything you can imagine from all different kinds of commentaries and seminary books and theological tombs. And then I have an entire shelf to the left and I got one of those little, I love those little labelers, you know, so I made it all like a library where you can tell what's where, but one label just says my friend Max oh, and every oh. single book from on the anvil. I told you wow. that was the first Bible study I ever led. Wow! I have every single book you've written and they have been, I've learned so much about Jesus from you. Thank you for not writing in a way that makes us impressed with you, but writing in a way that helps us fall in love with Jesus. I love that you put the cookies on the lower shelf so I can understand it. You did that so beautifully with Holy Spirit. Um, Here's my question that comes directly from the book. I really appreciated the You Unleashed chapter, and I liked where you talked about... um, when Paul talked about discerning gifts, he talked about the dynamic gifts and then the declarative gifts. Uh, that was so helpful, the way you broke that down. Uh, would you kind of riff on that for a minute? Mm. Can I open my book? Yes, to, sir. To, to make yes, sure sir. I get it's that page, correctly? It's page 136. Okay, Max. okay. Uh, I recall that extremely well, but I just don't want to misspeak. Well, I think, and I'll tell you why I loved it, is I felt like you gave us a bridge that regardless of your denominational background, regarding the specific gift of tongues, um, you know, some people really get confused with xenolalia and and glossalia, but Mm -hmm. you broke it down in a way that was understandable wherever you were on the continuum of, mm-hmm. of the supernatural gifts. Yeah. And I just thought it was beautiful the way you broke it down into dynamic and declarative gifts. Yeah, yeah. I actually think I stole that from Robert Morris, too. Maybe I need to call. <laughs> Listen, I love Pastor Morris. He's got some good stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, you cannot talk about the Holy Spirit without talking about 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 in, right. in 13 in part. And uh, and that is it is um, it is complex. I've wondered if we've made it more complex than it really needs to be. So so over the years, I've collected some thoughts, and yeah. that's what this chapter reflects. I was um, I came out of seminary. What you will understand, people might not understand, called a cessationist. Right. In other words, I believe that the. Um, the more demonstrative gifts of the Holy Spirit were intended to launch the church. And once the church was established and once we had scripture, those demonstrative gifts were discontinued. Mm-hmm. Godly men and women taught me that. I right. hope I really respect those men and right. those same men and women who taught me that I could be saved by grace. Right. Uh, I, I moved to South America and, um, uh, interestingly enough, I, I made friends with uh, Assem- Assembly of God pastors, yeah. uh, Assemblea de Dios, you know, yes. Assemb- uh, just some of the most wonderful God. Yeah. Yeah. And through, a, through some conversations that were uh, pretty direct, I was asked, well, exactly where does that teaching appear in Scripture? Right. And why would the Spirit give certain gifts then and not give them now? 
And, and, and really good questions. I, I, I can't say that my mind changed while I was in South America. Mm -hmm. I moved back to the States, those questions. Mm -hmm. And then in my own life, I, um, I, ba I bottomed out early in my service at Oak Hills Church there, where you, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the first two or three years, I, I uh, really struggled to try to maintain the family and the church. and. and mm -hmm. And I, that's when I really discovered what it means to lean into the Holy Spirit as a, mm -hmm. as a paraclete. And that's when I began to reconsider my opinion that those gifts uh, had, had discontinued. Mm -hmm. and today, I do not believe that. I do not believe that. I yeah, would it on my heart. And, and I respect people who would disagree. So that's okay. So no emails, please. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm go around it. I don't know of anything new I need to say or, or, or hear, but uh, I, I am super excited that everything that was available to the New Testament church and more is available right. to us. I'm not right. sure any gift list in the New Testament is complete. I believe right. there, there are suggestions of the kind so of work that God does. Yeah. I do believe that all the gifts are given at the moment of conversion. Right. Um, that when Paul says earnestly seek the gifts of the Spirit, he was speaking to people who were already converted. Right. And it's right to keep receiving gifts. And then right. and thirdly, I believe that spiritual gifts are exactly that. They're gifts. Yeah. So for me yeah. to brag or boast right. uh, that I've earned something or, or leave the impression that I'm super elite right. is simply, simply uh, inappropriate. Oh, I wholeheartedly agree, Max. We have a, a very similar trajectory. I, I, several times in my life, the Lord has had to correct me from becoming a budding Pharisee. And, <laughs> and part of that has been he's changed my, we said pneuma is the Greek word from the New Testament for spirit, pneuma hagon, Holy Spirit. Um, and so the fancy word most of y'all would know is pneumatology. All that means is your understanding of Holy Spirit. And and my pneumatology, uh, it looks like somebody is lost on GPS because it has been all over the map. But you know where I've settled in these latter years, like you, mine has changed much from my early walk with the Lord where I just wanted God in a box so I could understand him. Um, I'm much more comfortable with the mystery of God. Um, I don't want a God who's perfectly knowable. That would be a human God. My mind is too small mm -hmm. to contain. Uh, I love, um, you know, Max, you know, I love all the dead guys, the dead theologians, but a living God, Dr. Craig Keener, I read mm -hmm. recently, and he mm -hmm. said, if you get out of the Bible, what you expect to get out of the Bible, you need to change your expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think that applies to Holy Spirit as well, um, which leads me to my last question. I could stay on the phone with you all day, but I know you have another many, many more important interviews with famous people. I'm so glad I got to, to be with you for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come visit y'all in San Antonio too, um, sometime soon, by the way. I'll, I'll send Dean Lynn some information about that. Yes, sir. It's been, it's been too long since I've gotten to share text makes with y'all on the Riverwalk. But um, uh, years ago, I was with a friend and her husband, both of whom lead a church here in Nashville, and we were talking about the Trinity and how God, you know, St. Augustine says, only the Christian God is a perfect community unto himself. Our God is in us, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. He made us in his image, in our image. And I love that. I love that we were designed for community. But as we were talking about our God being a Trinitarian God, he said, Lisa, how do you see Holy Spirit? And I was like, what do you mean? And he said, well, I imagine you have a picture in your head of God the Father. And of course, this is anthropomorphic, subscribing human values to a holy God. But God himself allows us to. He gives metaphor and scripture of him tucking us under his wings and his hands. And he said, I bet you have a picture of God the Father. And I said, oh, yeah, I do. And he said, and I bet you have in your mind's eye kind of a picture of Jesus being that he was incarnate and we know he was of Jewish descent. And I said, oh, yeah, I can see my Jesus. I mean, I'm not saying that's a perfect image, but I definitely have a picture of Jesus. And he said, how do you see Holy Spirit? And I stopped and I went, oh, oh. And then I had to very honestly confess 
I, I don't have a picture in my head for Holy Spirit. And then I went on to tell them, actually, I was so afraid of the Holy Spirit for years that secretly I'm afraid he's ashamed of me. And if I walked into a room where God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were, I would kind of want to stand behind the Holy Spirit. And he said, you know, it's interesting you call him the Holy Spirit, that you put an article in front of his name. And he said, I bet as you grow in your relationship with spirit, you'll stop putting an article in front of his mm -hmm. name because you don't say the God, my heavenly father or the savior. And he said, he's Holy Spirit. And it, it arrested me, Max. And I realized well, I've still got a lot of room to grow. Wow. And, you know, the thing I love about Acts 2 isn't all the whistles and bells. It says when they engage with Holy Spirit, they were fulfilled. Mm. I thought, boy, there's a contentment and a peace that comes, regardless of your specific denominational parameters with Holy Spirit. To engage with God through Spirit is a very intimate, relational um, maturity. When did you begin to, at least in the mind's eye of your heart, when did you begin to develop a much more personal, intimate relationship with Holy Spirit? I, I think, uh, by the way, that is a fascinating observation. Mm. And I just had never thought of removing the article. I hadn't either. I mean, here I'm on a, a ministry tour talking about them. I've been saying the Holy Spirit everywhere. I've and I, I don't know that it's incorrect at all. Yeah. I just, but it did make me think, Certainly. huh, I don't put an article in front of any of my friends' names. It That's just, right. It's a good That's food right. for thought. That's right. Yeah. I would say my relationship with the Holy Spirit, with Holy Spirit, is, um, is more like a gradual takeoff of a plane mm -hmm. than rather a rocket ship. You know, yeah. Yeah. Let's go straight up. Uh, over the years, I have come to uh, sense the presence of the Spirit uh, mm -hmm. in giving uh, giving strength in my mm -hmm. preaching. Uh, mm -hmm. Lisa, there are occasions when you know we were talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Word of knowledge is one of them. There, there have been occasions mm -hmm. which I. I will say something in my preaching that I really did not prepare to say. Yeah. And yeah. I wasn't quite sure why I said it, but I felt such a, and, and, and now I know someone will either write or call me or come up to me and say, mm -hmm. you were talking to me when you said right. that. Um, and curious, doesn't it feel different, Max? When it you does. Get, don't it you does. Feel it's like a little. There's a gumption to it. Uh -huh. There's a. Oh. Yes, yes, <laughs> like, sir. It, it's it's a it's a bit of a force, uh, and when I'm studying, Lisa, I, I would imagine there are maybe occasions when you're studying and you say, "That wasn't written there, but that thought fits." Mm -hmm. I did have an experience, uh, a supernatural experience. I'm sixty, almost sixty-eight now. At the age of sixty-four, uh, I, wow. I for the first time uh, prayed in a heavenly language. Did not expect it coming. I did not see it coming, and uh, and it's ironic because much of my early ministry, I told people you can't do that. But now it's <laughs> a part of my daily prayer life. Right. I don't think I'm supernatural because of it. In fact, I've often said I think it's because my mind is so scattered when I'm praying that the Holy Spirit right. says, maybe I'll just take over here, Max. <laughs> right. And, and right. it's a beautiful experience. It's a beautiful yeah. experience. So yeah, I, I feel... The bottom line for me, Lisa, I feel more joy and strength than I have in my entire life because of him. And I feel uh, encouraged, even though our society feels like it's coming apart at the fabric. I feel like we may be getting to the point where we're so desperate that we will do We'll, what we're desiring to do, and that is we will invite the Holy Spirit to breathe breath on the bones of That's our right. world, and we'll see revival as we're longing right. to see it. Right. I love that um, when Jesus said, you will receive power, and you will be my witnesses, that, that wasn't just to Pentecostals. 
That was to all <laughs> Christ followers. And that was that was incumbent with his I'm I'm giving you my spirit. And so, you know, some of us have a hard time holding on to that gift or getting our arms completely around it. What would you suggest, Max? To the person who just leaned in and is is joining us in our conversation, who if they were if they were in a safe place where they didn't feel like people would disguise gossip as prayer requests and, and talk about them, they would go, "Can you help me? I just don't really feel like I I even know how to lean into the Holy Spirit." Mm-hmm. Would you give them some encouragement? Well, I think Missy's counsel is really spot on here, and that is the breath prayer. Uh, You know, when Jesus uh, appeared to the followers in the upper room after the resurrection, um, he first of all said to them, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. He so easily could have, you know, chastised them for abandoning him, but he didn't. He, he, He said, peace be with you. He then dealt with the doubts of Thomas. And then the scripture says he breathed on them. And they receive the Holy Spirit. I love that. I, I've, I may be oversimplifying this, Lisa, uh, but I believe what Jesus exhales, we inhale. Mm-hmm. And so at any point during the day, we know he's exhaling strength into our world mm-hmm. and simply falls to us to inhale. And I mm-hmm. sometimes do it physically just to help myself, but it's essential to do it spiritually and say, Lord, Lord, I receive you now. I receive you in this moment. I receive Mm -hmm. you today. You know, quite often the question surfaces, do we need a second post conversion experience Mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit? Do we need a post conversion, you know, a special? Right. And my answer to that is yes, we need a second and a third and a tenth and a thousandth. That's and right. I, every That's day, right. I believe I received the Holy Spirit afresh early this morning when I, I woke too. up. And, and You know, it's interesting how so many people bring that argument in, in of you get everything you need in salvation. I'm like, well, of course we do. And Paul says, work out your salvation every day. Yeah. And I, Matt Chandler brought up the word re-gospeled, which mm-hmm. I love because atonement isn't one step in this, you know, linear movement toward God. It's 360 degrees. He's making all things new. I need fresh manna every day. Every day. day. So I agree every with you. Well, it's an extra. I'm like, extra? I will take all the extra <laughs> I can get because I need Jesus. I, I love that you said a breath prayer. Can we break it down a little further? And will you even help us, give us a breath prayer um, Mm -hmm. that helps us engage with Holy Spirit this morning before some of us, at least those on the West Coast, before they really get their day kicked off? I certainly will. I certainly will. By the way, I cannot help but notice how many Brazilians you have posting messages. Well, will you please tell them, because we've got some youngins on here that do not know how much you love that country. Well, gostaria de mandar um abraço grande ao Brasil. Eu te amo. Eu deixei o coração no Brasil. Brazil's a wonderful country, and that's where I developed uh, my walk with Christ so deep in, in those five years that we lived in Rio. So, And also I know Rio's in, in the middle of an important election right now, so our prayers uh, go to the nation of Brazil. Let your prayer for, for Holy Spirit be simply, I receive you today. I receive you today. I receive you as my strength, my guide, my helper. I receive you as my advocate. You pray for me, you pray with me. I receive you as my comforter, that you walk ahead of me and you walk behind me. You protect me, you seal my salvation. I receive you, I receive you. I inhale you into the deepest parts, the recesses of my soul. May today be a day that I Exhale the spirit that I've received over others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Max, for um, continuing to shepherd us toward Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I 
Uh, there aren't enough words in the English language for me to thank you. You've been such a spiritual, really a dad to me. You're not old enough to be my dad, but you have been a real spiritual father to me. And I deeply appreciate you along with millions of others. Sure. We'll be praying for you that You're you very feel kind. that You're more very gumption kind. from the Holy Spirit Thank in the rest you. of your interviews. Amen. Love Thank you, Max. You. Love you too. Bye bye. Have a great day. You Tell too. Dean and I said, hey. I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. You're missing. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, this is Dean Alone Lakato. Max and I are so thankful you joined us for today's encouraging word. Please subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a single message. For more information about Max's ministry, please visit maxlocato.com. Until next time, stay encouraged. Hello, friends. Susan here with Team Locato. We're excited to announce a fresh take on Max's best-selling 365-day devotional, Grace for the Moment, Note-Taking Edition. Each page of this beautiful leather soft edition has plenty of room to pen your own prayers and insights. You can order your copy of Grace for the Moment, Note-Taking Edition now at maxlocato.com.